This is a wonderful, beautiful day, the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. You are welcome to the Glory Realm Devotional. This is the time that the glory of God is released, the presence of God is made manifest, and the power of God makes a difference in our lives. I'm very confident that God is about to do something beautiful, something awesome for you, and you mustn't miss out. Yesterday we were talking about you know, in the book of John, chapter number 1, verse number 14, and how the Word of God became flesh. And I was trying to explain the reality of the fact that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. It kind of, it's very difficult for the natural man to comprehend, but if you are a child of God and you know the Word of God, it tells us that the Word, the visible Word, were framed. Oh, they came into existence, when God Almighty spoke and said, let there be light, remember Genesis number one, chapter number one, God said, let there be light, and there was light. Boom, out of nowhere came forth light. And that same word that created everything in the beginning, now, which John talked about in John chapter number one, verse, verse four, you know, says in him was life, and the life was the light of men. That same word became flesh. The word has the capacity to bring things that does not exist into existence and it therefore, I mean, it is therefore not too strange that the word itself became flesh. The word took on the form of flesh. It became a human incarnate. That's what Amplify calls it. The human incarnate Jesus that was the word that existed from the beginning with God the Father before the beginning of time. So there are two beginnings there. First was the beginning with God the Father, which was in the dateless past, eternities of eternities, came into existence, came into time. And in, in, in fact, this is amazing that God Almighty restricted him te- himself to time. Because when he became the word incarnate, that is flesh, you know, kind of like restricted into time. He, he, you know, though he wasn't like human being. Now, don't forget this. Um, he wasn't in the form of human being. I mean, he wasn't in the form of human being like fallen Adam. You know why? It is the word that became flesh. It is not, you know, Joseph or some other human beings that impregnated Mary. If you go to the scriptures, the, the incarnate birth, you know, the incarnation of the word of Christ, you know, becoming human, God said, you know, the, the spirit of the Most High shall overshadow you, you know, telling Mary through the angel Gabriel, you know. And that only thing that is conceived of you was talking about Jesus, 
Now it was talking about the word, the word that spoke things into be reality, took the form of flesh. And now, as reading the A. W. K. I mean, uh, Kayon's book, as reading Kayon's book, and was talking about the reality of that, an amazing revelation he talked about. And then he talked about the fact that, you know, the 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 seed that is like, um, you know, a baby in the womb does not really carry the blood of the mother. The baby in the womb does not carry the blood of the mother. The mother, um, uh, what the mother has is an ovum. Uh, or the, 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 uh, in, 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 in her system is an egg that is not fertilized. All right? Until the egg is fertilized, it does not have life. And Leviticus 17 says, the life of the creature is in the blood. Okay? So the unfertilized egg does not have the ability to become, I mean, a, a soul, a human life. And that is the reason why you don't see a woman sitting by herself having a child, all right? She has the unfertilized egg. Now, until that egg is fertilized, it doesn't have life. It is when the sperm from the man comes in that the life is introduced into that egg. That is when the egg is fertilized and that is where blood comes in. And now get this right. So until the holy presence of God, which is the word, was introduced into Mary, there was no life in the egg that was on her inside. So the life that came was the life of God that was introduced into the unfertilized egg that was in Mary. So the blood of Jesus is the pure blood of God Almighty. Now don't forget, verse 4 says, in him was life, all right? In Jesus was life, all right? And the life is the light of men. So when the life that is in Jesus was introduced into Mary's womb, life was introduced and that was when she truly became pregnant so there was no impurity the sinful nature the fallen nature of adam was not transferred onto that seed all right now and that is why he could come to atone and die for us now another uh, quick illustration for you to understand this Kenyon talked about a scientific experiment in which an unfertilized egg, you know, eggs of chicken, for example, kept somewhere. It didn't, nothing extra happened to it. But when the egg was fertilized and was kept, after some time, it began to have red, you know, blood-like kind of, you know, parts in the egg. Now, until it is fertilized, the blood you know, part of it didn't show up, the tissues, you know. So the egg came, I mean, life came when it was fertilized, all right? So the life of Jesus was a pure and glorious life that was not with the sinful nature of Adam. So that is the reason why he can atone for you and I. And that is the, the awesome reality of this verse of scripture is so deep so serious and many people are confused here that's why i have to give that illustration and thank god for people like Kenyon. all right it says the word christ became flesh human incarnate and tabernacle fixed his tent of flesh lived the why among us so he lived the why among us the word <laughs> the invisible god almighty became visible and yet many people didn't know him that's why verse number 11 and 12 says he came to his own and his own didn't receive him but as many as receive him to them he gave power to become sons of god and that is the reason why the atonement of jesus above every other solution for redemption of man is the only valid one every other religion tried to practice a form of purification or the other but it is the spotless, sinless, awesome personality, blood of Jesus, that is able to wash away your sins and my sins. 
And the Bible says, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Why? Because He had no sin in His system. And when He died, it was the perfect blood for your purification, the forgiveness of your sins and my sins. And that's the reason why you need to totally submit to Him. Without Christ, there's no other redemption, no other means of redemption. Give Him everything today. Say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and I need you to have mercy on me. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Wash away my sins by your pure blood that you shed on the cross. And please write my name in the book of life. I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for answering my prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, I believe something glorious has happened to you. You are welcome into the family of God. I decree it is well with your body, soul, and spirit. Till I come your way again tomorrow, by the grace of God. This is Ego Louis, Yegwe Guru. God bless you. Thank you.